know, I'm really surprised at how pretty this state park is. We're so happy at this place. Um, I wish that I would have reserved more than two days here. Well, we've made it to Lake Erie. We are at Sterling State Park in Monroe, Michigan. Um, we drove here from Mammoth Cave National Park and we got in about uh, 40 minutes ago. We are right on the water. Uh, I can't wait to show you around this campsite. It's beautiful here. All right, so we are in Site 27. We just got set up. We put the entire tent up to kind of block the wind because it is a bit windy here. This is my first look at a great lake, and this is Lake Erie, and you can see how close we are. We've got a little bit of shelter here from the wind, which is great, and then uh, we can walk right through there and get down to the water's edge. Well, it's May 17th. I think the high temperature today was around 62, 63, and I think the low is gonna be in the, in the very low 40s. Well, it's day number two here at Sterling State Park, and it's windy, so I had to put my hat on it. It's a lot better when my hair is not, you know, hitting me in my face constantly. But I'm gonna walk back down to the water. It really is beautiful. I'm so excited to be here. This looks like an ocean. It's water as far as the eye can see, all the way to the horizon. It's that's amazing. This is definitely the largest freshwater body of water I have ever seen. Lake Erie is the 11th largest lake in the world, and it's also the warmest of the Great Lakes. I am gonna have to feel how cold this water is. Yes, it's, it's pretty cold. It's pretty cold. So the temperature in Lake Erie fluctuates from what I'm seeing from in the 30s to the 70s. One thing I noticed here is the smell. When you're at, when I am at the water's edge like this, I expect to smell like a salt air. So Lake Erie has an astonishing 2,000 plus shipwrecks, which is among the highest concentration of shipwrecks in the world. So I met this very nice young lady from Michigan. Yeah, from Michigan. So last week there was this, a, a five and a half foot sturgeon fish came to shore. That means that fish is 35 years old. And it came to our lake and decided to go and quits, but it's rare. For and that it might, what, what were you we saying about it migrating here? It migrated here just so that it could have its end of days. Where would it have migrated from? Well, from the bigger lakes. I met these guys, there's four of them, they're fishermen, but they did not want to be on video, so I'm not going to video them. But they've caught these walleye fish out of Lake Erie. Here's a better look at some of these cabins. A lot of people here fishing. Those guys that had that walleye a few minutes ago, they said they did not want to be on the video. They were just some Michigan hillbillies, they called themselves, and they weren't into being videoed. But I'm taking my electric bike for a spin. Now there is a River Raisin National War Memorial. I think it's a memorial for the War of 1812, I believe. And I understand that it's just a bike ride away from here. And I think they have like the oldest building in Michigan there. Some like buildings from the 1800s and you know, I'm, I'm sure it's worth a visit. Okay, so this is the campground exit. Hopefully this road isn't too busy. So I found some kind of trail. I'm gonna take this on my bike, see where it leads. Oh look, there's a little platform probably for swimming. 
this. This says restoring the delta. Um, submerged vegetation provided a safe haven for young walleye and bluegill to live and grow. So these people were just fishing and he says they caught some bass. Yeah, that's what these are. Look Why at not? that. These are Wow, that's a smell. good size one. I got two of them, same size. Nice, yeah. you guys will have dinner tonight. Yeah, I'm, she don't I'm eat a it, vegetarian. I do. Oh. I'm a Floridian, I eat fish. I'm from Florida too. Really, I live in Fort Lauderdale 48 years. We live in Lakeland. I've lived yeah, there for Lakeland. 50 years. Wow. Where do, how long are you guys up here for? Oh, I'm, she I live here. here. I <laughs> okay. was born I've here, been but here. left when I was three. So. Okay. I yep. like Florida. We're here for a month. Still. Oh. Wow. Well, you brought some weather with you. That's good. Because yeah. we've been freezing. It's a beautiful day. It is. Well, thank you. Well, you you're don't go fishing welcome. with someone that wants to leave. Yeah. We've been here all day since 10 o'clock. So look at this beautiful little bridge. And those people were fishing somewhere right over there. Isn't that pretty? This is a fantastic park. Did I already say that? So, so are you from around here? I'm from uh, by maybe, east of maybe. So that's close to here. We're from Florida. Oh, how <laughs> about uh, how about ten miles from this place? Yeah. yeah, and you're probably retired. Yes. And this guy, he's out here uh, t helping to keep the lakes and the area clean. He's picking up the. The garbage that people did not pack out with them, right? Yeah, they, they have a tendency to leave it right in the, right in the fishing areas. <laughs> Good for you. And you say there's a lot of carp out here. Oh, yeah, they jump out, especially, I think, right around this time. I haven't been out here a lot because I had back trouble, but uh, yeah, I come out here, I says, I take a bag with me. Yeah, All that's, you gotta do is pick it up, you know, some of that stuff I'll recycle. That's a great idea. And, uh, so, that guy that I was just talking to, he said that if I come up here and I take a left, that I would go to that Risen, uh, Raise, River Raisin Memorial. I don't think I'm going to go that far, but he did say it was easy to get to on the bike. So these are just little marshy areas off of the lake. I'm sure that they're used to help clean the lake, kind of like in Florida, how we have um, stormwater ponds adjacent to lakes. The, the first flush of pollution would go into these marshes and then into the lake. And they do say that Lake Erie, I believe, even though it has 50% uh, of the fish population of all the Great Lakes, I do believe that Lake Erie is the most polluted. I better start to make my way back towards the camp. I don't want to get too far away. Have a nice little playground area for children. So Sterling State Park is the only state park in Mich Michigan that accesses Lake Erie. And if you decide to stay at the state park, there are a lot of stores near here. I know there's a Kroger's grocery store uh, about a mile away. And there's a lot of restaurants. As a matter of fact, Fred and I, we found a restaurant that uh, they were bragging about their walleye. So we're going to go try that tonight. There's trees up there, those dark purple colored trees. Very pretty. So where'd you ride to? I rode up to the beach and then I went over and rode the uh, walking pass around the marsh, marshes over here. And uh, a lot of trails will run the marshes. This is a really pretty park, huh? Yes, very nice. I encountered some, uh, you know, bird watchers with their big cameras. Oh, really? Yeah. What kind of birds, I wonder, were they watching for? I don't know. I didn't see that. But the roads are quite bumpy on the bicycle. They are. Not good for your hemorrhoids. You don't have hemorrhoids. Cut. You don't have hemorrhoids. I probably have them now. <laughs> there is what appears to be a power plant 
uh, next door to the park but um, you know other than seeing it you don't smell it or it doesn't really affect anything well I just did some research on this power plant right here and it is a coal burning power plant that operates on steam turbines so we're thinking that that is steam coming out of those chimney stacks not sure but that's our best guess all right so Fred is being taunted by this little blackbird with red and yellow tipped wings what's he doing to you He's, he's following you around the campsite, isn't he? He's trying to ambush me behind my back. And then, as soon, yeah, as soon as Fred turns his back, the little bird swoops down to his head. I don't know. He's not bothering there he me. Is. There he is, right there. Get a picture of him. Right there on my truck is that bird. Oh, yeah. There he is. Can you see him on the truck? He really is after Fred. This has been going on since we got here. And Fred is just obsessed with this bird. And this bird is obsessed with Fred. That's him. He's a vicious little blackbird. He may try to, he wants to peck my eyes out. <laughs> now this bird is standing at the apex of our tent. This is like, this is his campsite. Fred swears that that bird is stalking him. Well, we are downtown Monroe. A lot of good looking restaurants here, but uh, Trip Advisors gave very high recommendations to this place. It's called Public House. So we got this beer. It's called Interurban, and it is brewed here in Michigan, and it's brewed just for this restaurant. It is delicious. Well, Fred got his walleye. I hope it is good. Well, about 30 minutes from the park is this Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village. And we got here about 10 o'clock. This place is absolutely huge, huge. It's like, it seems like it's bigger than Disneyland. It says this limousine was first used by Nixon and provided refuge for Reagan after he was shot by would-be assassin John Hinckley. This was the car that Kennedy was shot in and the roof comes off of it, which of, of course is how he was shot. I think the car you can see the spot on the side where uh, security can, could ride. Rear two. And the rear too, Fred says. I can hardly get Fred away from this Kennedy car. This was used by Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, John Kennedy until the 1961 Lincoln was delivered, and Lyndon Johnson as a spare. Well, here's the next car in the lineup. Look at that. Amazing. Sunshine Special. This is Franklin Roosevelt's car. The first car expressly designed and built for a president. You know, a guy at church, Joe, told us about this place. I didn't see anything about this in any of the videos that I watched. So thank you, Joe, for giving a shout out to this museum and letting us know that this is something that we should not miss. So this carriage was used by Theodore Roosevelt and uh, William Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Warren Harding, and Calvin Coolidge during their administrations. A train with individual carriages. I've never seen anything like that before. This train is called the President. may have been a presidential train. Oh look, this was the coach. I bet it's beautiful in there. I think this could have been a presidential train. This train is magnificent. It is very large. This is a beautiful train, isn't it? Big too, isn't it? It's a, a huge. 1927 Bluebird School Bus. Oh my. 
the Bluebird became a major bus manufacturer. So this car is a 1927 LaSalle Roadster and it was the first car where you could choose your color. Um, they developed a quick drying colored paint. This is the 1899 Duryea Trap, one of the most graceful early automobiles. 1936 Lincoln Zephyr Sedan. 1956 Continental Mark II Sedan. Look at all the metal in these cars. A lot of metal. 1937 Cord 812 Convertible. 1931 Bugatti Type 41 Royale convertible. Unmatched style and luxury. 1931 Duesenberg Model J, the world's finest motor car of its time. Here's a 1966 Volkswagen Deluxe Station Wagon. Is this a boat or a car? This is a car. It says the age of speed. They're just trying to build the fastest car. Goldenrod. 1903 Packard Model F. 1919 Ford Model T. And then this vehicle is a 1956 Ford Thunderbird. Oh, that's a nice car. Beautiful. Remember the movie American Graffiti? This looks like a little T-bird that Suzanne Summers was you know, traveling around town in to evade Richard Dreyfus. These are helicopters. Yeah, it says it's halfway between an airplane and a helicopter. It's the 1931 Pit Pitcairn. 1903. This is the Wright Brothers plane. This is not their original plane, obviously, but it says when they grew up, they made a plane just like the one in front of you. It's the replica. And here we go, Northwest Airlines. This is a 1939 DC-3. This looks like an incredible plane. It says this was Henry Ford's airplane. Better than any other plane of its time, the Ford trim motor is a testament to Henry's willingness to take risk. He said, I would rather build a big plane and learn something, even if it didn't fly, than build a smaller one that worked perfectly and not learn anything. This plane is spectacular. He certainly was an innovator, to say the least. Look at this. What a beautiful exhibit. Coast to coast in 48 hours. This is the Model T of the sky. This is George Washington's camp chest of 1783. So this chair was the chair that Abraham Lincoln was shot in. So he was sitting in this chair while he was shot. This is a basket of cotton that would have been used for harvesting. Oh my gosh! These are plantation field shoes. Take a look at some of these tapestries. It says, in the decades before the Civil War, skilled local weavers created these brightly covered, these brightly colored coverlets for eager customers. This is an 1868 band saw. This is a rifling machine, 1860, 
spiral grooves inside the barrel of a gun increases the gun's accuracy. I have a feeling that Fred's going to be in this area for a while. This is about um, the history of the rifle and manufacturing of the rifles. So this is from a fabric factory, a textile factories began replacing home spinning and weaving in the late 1820s. This is farming equipment in the 1880s. 1885 silver plated tea set. This is a middle class American kitchen from the early 1930s. This is a kitchen from the 1890s possibly in the Midwest. So this is a kitchen from the late 1700s. Wow. This is a kitchen from the 1840s. Well, they have this cute little market area and we have potato and leek soup. I have a ham sandwich and Fred has a tuna salad sandwich. But we came outside to give the dogs a little break. The sun feels so good to Lucy. Does that feel good, Lucy? Can you imagine if Henry Ford could see his empire today? Look at all this, these surrounding buildings. Here's a big section on agriculture and the environment. Ford's experimental lightweight tractor, circa 1907. This little guy here was 1939, Ford tractor. This is an international harvester, 1912. And this was used to carry uh, milk cans, which were the larger cans, and cream cans, which were the smaller cans. This is a Steam tractor engine from 1916. This self-propelled traction engine moved from farm to farm under its own steam. 23 ton engine. There's a farm wagon, 1895 to 1902. Well, and here's your Oscar Mayer Wiener truck. This thing in the back with the, the designs on it, that was a cupboard from 1710. Well, this rocking chair is from the 1800s. It says it looks quite rustic. You might not guess that it was once owned by one of the richest men in the 19th century America, Cornelius Vanderbilt. You're kidding me. Where is this? Oh, yes, this writing desk was Edgar Allan Poe's writing desk. This is a portrait back here of Mark Twain from 1904. The table belonged to Mark Twain. This desk is the secretary's desk from 1720. It was owned by the Adler family of Frankfurt, Germany, who were in the book and antique business. With the rise of the Nazi regime during the 1930s, harassment increased for this Jewish family until in 1938, their home was ransacked. Almost everything the family owned was thrown into a courtyard of a multi-story apartment building, including this desk. So this cupboard is from 1675. It says the wealthy use these ornate cupboards likely the grand set piece they own to store valuables and to display their expensive silver pewter and ceramics okay so this is a history of heating stoves look the old doll houses these must have been for the very wealthy little girls <laughs> here is a oh yeah so this is the this is the first assembly line this just shows how it everything went together so here is a picture of Henry and Clara Ford together with their son Edsel well I have showered fed the dogs now it's about what is it about eight o'clock we're gonna be headed in the morning to Tequanawan Falls we're there for three nights um, it's been a 
short visit here at Sterling State Park, but we have thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been so nice. The grass here is just beautiful. Um, and we wanted to walk down to the lake to get one more look at Lake Erie. This, I think this is going to be our last shot at it. Well, I think that we will end this video here. Um, so, but please be sure to subscribe. We have several parks that we're going to be visiting all throughout the Upper Peninsula. It's going to take us about five and a half hours to get to the Upper Peninsula from here. But thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.